All my mushrooms are gone. Oh, I'm gonna shed it here. What's going on, Reef Fan March here? Fragbox TV. I like to pick up the camera sometimes when we make mistakes or when stuff that is not good that happens in the store because maybe somebody someday somewhere is watching this and can learn. So, what is today's video? This used to be covered in mushrooms. This was my little mushroom farm private collection here in the store and last night i don't know what happened we're still trying to figure it out and i'm just going to talk to you through sort of my different theories of why they're all gone why they started melting why they started but more importantly what am i going to do to fix it i put a small amount of carbon in this little reef casa aqua cannon reactor here um, and some poly filter into the tank what is poly filter letting go and popping off the rock and if it was just one or two mushrooms usually i wouldn't be super concerned but when you have 40 or 50 different types that are doing it, something is definitely wrong. Now, the weirdest part about this issue that I'm having with these mushrooms is that in the same tank, most of the other corals look just fine. Like these clove polyps, these pallies, some anacropora, zoanthids, really unfazed by whatever is going on. Even some maybe a little bit more sensitive species like uh, Montipora. We have some rainbow Monty here, Leptoceras. As you can see, all of these things really no problemo. But when we go over to the mushrooms, bom, bom, bom. so what did I do? I pulled them all out. I kind of panicked a little bit last night because mushrooms typically are the easiest corals to keep. If you neglect them, they grow. If you feed them, they grow. If you don't feed them, they grow. If your water is dirty, they grow. And if your water is on the cleaner side, they're still going to grow. They're Looks just like butt. easy. But here's a small collection of all the ones that let go from their bases. There's maybe 30 or 40 little ones in there hanging out. Discosomas and Redactus. Now, if I was my own customer, I came into my own store and I told me everything that just happened, I would tell myself to look first at the light. Light, light, light. Too much light. They're gonna get pissed off, they're gonna let go of the rock, and they're gonna look for somewhere else. But I made absolutely zero changes to the light, so I'm gonna go ahead and rule that out. Now, not making changes to the light, it still could be the light in one other case. If you ran too much carbon, your water becomes a lot more clear. And so even though you didn't make any changes to the light, it can penetrate the water a lot more if your water suddenly became clear. So this would happen after a large amount of carbon use or if you did a really big water change after not doing it maybe for a long time, your water becomes really clear and then light penetrates more, mushrooms unhappy, they pop off. Neither of those are gonna be the case. So let's look at nutrients. Phosphate, I keep them really high in that tank. If they're really low, mushrooms can get stressed out if the water's too clean. And the same goes for nitrates. If it's too clean, same idea, they're not gonna be happy, they could let go, they could even melt. Both of these quite high. I keep them high in the farm system. So I'm gonna go ahead and rule those two out as a possibility. Alkalinity, this could be another one. But it was stable, 9.3 almost every single day for the entire week, which is higher than I normally like. I like to keep my alk around 7.78, but it's been high for almost two weeks if we're looking back at the log. So I don't think it is the alkalinity. Calcium and magnesium, in check. So one by one, I'm slowly ruling out things. How about salinity? Arguably the most important. I should have started with this. What's the salt at? We test it. It's at 1.026. We recalibrate the, rec the refractometer to make sure that we are getting an accurate reading. It's still 1.026. So it's looking like water chemistry really isn't it. How about flow? Ha! Ah, I did make some changes. Now I went and cleaned all of the power heads in the tank and I probably changed the flow pattern. Not probably, I did actually change the flow pattern to get less flow over the mushrooms. Now, that shouldn't cause them, in theory, to pop off. High flow, too much flow for mushrooms, they're gonna say, no thank you, adios amigos, and they're gonna let go of their base and go free floating in the water. But that's not what I did, I lowered the flow. And through my nearly 20 years of experience, I've never seen mushrooms let go under low flow conditions. Is it possible? Maybe, but I had mushrooms that were detaching not only from this section where I lowered the flow, they were also suffering over on that side, which is super high flow, and I had a couple nice fire mushrooms there that were spilling their guts. So I rule out flow. I'm starting to get really frustrated here, and I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, contaminants. 
The skimmer, look how nice and clean it is. Why is it so pristine? Look at that. The acrylic is really clean when a skimmer really should look like, like one of these, all gunked up, full of coralline and crap. It's because we just cleaned it. It was actually sitting outside of the tank. I was getting a little bit lazy and I wasn't running a skimmer. It was about two or three weeks, but everything was looking fantastic in the tank. The zoas were looking better than ever. The mushrooms were really puffy, even the Ghanipora. And it made me think about the time that I went to Julian Sprung's place. He has a beautiful reef tank in his living room. He's been running for 20 years without a skimmer. No skimmer on that tank. So I started playing with the idea of, okay, let's not have a skimmer. Let's see how far we can push it. Yesterday, right along the glass here, look at that. See those little purple things? Those are called purple palithos. There was about, I don't know, Will, how many do we frag? 40, 50? About. I took a razor blade and I scraped them all off because they were just growing basically into the silicone and glass rather than growing on a plate. And this is my theory. This is what you've been watching up until now for. This is where I'm at. I need you to comment below. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. It's something new for me and I'm really not sure. But my theory is that I frag them in the water. Usually we take out our zoanthids or pallies if we're gonna frag over to our frag station over here. We typically do not frag corals underwater. We bring them over here. We'll use some tools, we'll use some cutters, some bandsaw, some razor blades, and then we put them back in the water. But in this case, I had no chance to do that because they were growing right on the glass. So I had to cut them in the tank. Now I've done this many times before. I've cut palithoas, I've cut zoas underwater with no ill effect, but I've never cut them before without running a skimmer. And I'm wondering now if the palitoxin that's in these, if you don't know, I'm not gonna do a whole video on them, just go and research palitoxin. It's quite potent. You should really treat these corals with respect because about once a year, once every two years, we hear about someone ending up in the hospital. I haven't heard of anyone dying yet, but they are quite powerful. Someone's on Google. Yeah, I'm on Google. I'm on Google a few times. When any, anytime something happens with these, CBC or MSNBC, they call me as a reference because I've been doing this for so long. I kind of like it. But anyways, that's not the point of today's video. I'm wondering if when I frag them, they released the palitoxin, there was no skimmer to pull it out, and the mushrooms had a really adverse reaction. That's where I'm at. I don't know. What am I going to do to fix it? You know, this is one of the frustrating things with the hobby. If you can't pinpoint it, I would rather have a definitive answer. Like, I've had a alkalinity pump get stuck on before. Dun, da, da, da. And then I know what happened because I come, I see that my, my alkalinity reservoir is completely empty and everything in my tank is dead and it sucks but at least i know what happened you know i would rather know it's very frustrating to not know and then we're just left with theories this is as far as i've gotten and why i'm asking for help actually in today's video palitoxin affects only them for some reason i'm not sure why it's not affecting the fish or other ones no skimmer to pull it out and i'm left uh, where i'm at this morning i sorry last night in a little bit of a panic the nice thing about having a shop is I have multiple systems. I grab them from here, boom, I pop them over here. And it's like magic, you know, under 12 hours, they're looking great. They're looking like they did. And these two tanks are very similar in terms of lighting, flow, water parameters. So it really tells me that there is something a little extra in the other tank that's causing this. Moves, harmful organics, toxic ammonia, heavy metals, all forms of phosphate medication and treatments. I've used this many times in the past. It's supposed to change color, uh, based on the specific pollutant. I've never actually seen that happen, but this is a great product. Uh, I think you should try it. I'm not sponsored by them. You just happen to have it on the shelf and it does work, especially if you're trying to get out medications after treatment, stuff like that. ChemiClean, it binds to it. It's actually patented. Anyways, I put some of that in and now we're gonna do a big water change. So we're setting up about 30, 40%. We're matching the salinity, temperature. We're gonna drain this puppy. We're gonna add new water and then we're gonna hope for the best. I left a couple mushrooms in the tank, sort of like canaries just to see if they bounce back, if they rebound, how they're gonna look. And you know what? It's sort of a blessing in disguise because next week I have one of the largest mushroom shipments coming in that I think I've ever brought in in my, in my life. So uh, I am religious and I think God works in mysterious ways. And I really, like I said, I think this is a blessing in disguise because I would much rather have it happen now with a couple thousand dollars worth of mushrooms on the line, which I more or less saved. All I had to do was move them over and they're all looking good instead of you know, next week with, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars worth of jawbreakers, bounce mushrooms, beautiful yumas. We're getting in some of the craziest stuff I've I've ever seen. If it looks anything like the photos, it's 
there, it's going to be nuts. So kind of a good thing that this happened now. I really hope that this video maybe helps somebody out there that may be dealing with something like this. It's the first time I've ever dealt with it. Mushrooms have never given me trouble and it's why I'm expanding so much of my farm here in the store. I recently cleared out I would say 70, 80% of the corals in here, all these encrusting species of Cyphastria, they're just taking over. They just grow so, so fast. And you could get them, how do I explain it? You could get them at a lot of places. If you go to a frag swap, I see so many of the same things, Cyphastrias, Free Care Pavonas, Mr. Freeze Leptos, all these pieces that I grow out really well, hobbyists also grow out really well. So you end up, it's, it's a weird business where we don't really compete with the hobbyists, but we do in a sense, like you can buy pieces from us. You can also score them at frag swaps. And um, there's not really too many hobbies or businesses that I can think that are like that, where in some cases you do end up competing with your own customers because you know you go to a, a reef of palooza there's a worldwide coral booth of course and top shelf aquatics which is two of the most well-known and respected names in the entire industry and then you know in between you'll have so many little vendors and some of them are not businesses they're just people that have, have grown out corals really really well and your customers end up competing with you on some of the same corals but with mushrooms not the same. Ganiporas, not the same. I don't have people growing them and trading them in as much. So I'm kind of shifting, I'm just giving you a little bit of insight, sort of shifting what's going on here with the farm. And like I said, mushrooms really have never given me any sort of headache. They've never kept me up late at night. They've never brought me back to the store at midnight trying to figure out what's going on. I think I nailed it. I don't know. What do you guys think? We're going to wrap up today's video. Hope it was fun. Hope it was helpful. And hope to see you back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. And hopefully in better spirits with our mushroom corals. See you later. Bye-bye.